11.4, expanding the logarithmic expression from type 2, okay? Now, because we're on doing type 2, it means you would have already had to have done type 1. So I didn't include the rules because you would have already seen them in the topic problem type 1, again, if you watch the videos, or even in the explanation of the first problem that Alex gives you, it will give you those three rules. So I didn't rewrite them there, but remember for a quotient, you break it up with a minus of two logs. For a product, you break it up with a plus of two logs. For the power, you just bring the power to the front, right? It's essentially what's happening. Now understand that for some of these, you may need to simplify them first. Um, and what I mean by that is you're going to want to write any kind of radicals as exponents. Okay, so you definitely need to do that. And then if that um, radical, if that radical becomes an exponent, that exponent actually needs to be applied to every single term. So that's what I mean by simplify it. So for instance, this one, I've got the square root. The square root can be written as whatever's on the inside there, raised to the one half power because the square root is equivalent to a one half power. But this one half applies to everything inside. So when I simplify this, this is actually y to the one half. z cubed to the one half is three halves when you multiply those exponents. And then x to the fifth times one half is five halves. So this is the simplified version of the logarithm before I even expanded anything, okay? And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the quotient rule first. So for the quotient rule, I have to take the log of the top minus the log of the bottom, okay? So I have log of y to the one half, z to the three halves, still the log of this entire thing, minus, because I'm doing the quotient, log of x to the five halves. But I still have a product, so I now have to do step two. So this will become log of y to the one half plus log of z to the three halves. And I still have the minus log x to the five halves. Now there's nothing in the front here to distribute, and there's no exponent here. So these brackets are really not necessary and I would not erase them until I've decided whether or not they were necessary. So when you do that step two, breaking up the product, it is necessary for you to put the brackets in there at first or big giant parentheses and then later decide whether or not you need them, okay? And the only reason why I decided to erase them instead of write them again is because I don't have room for another line. Because even if I decide that I don't need the parentheses, I would have rewritten the line without the parentheses, but then I would still have to do step three, and so I'd still need another line. And if you notice, I don't have that room. So once I decided I didn't need the parentheses, I just erase them simply because I'm running out of room. Otherwise, I would have written that next line without the parentheses, and then do step three. So step three says I need to take this exponent and bring it to the front. I'm gonna take this exponent and bring it to that guy's front and get this exponent and take it to that guy's front. So it becomes one half log of y plus three halves log of z minus five halves log of x. And this is the final answer for the expansion. Every single argument no longer has a product, no longer has a quotient, and no longer has an exponent. Now, Let's look at this one. So the first thing I want to do is get those radicals in their exponent forms. And if I do that, I have x to the fifth over z and then y to the two thirds. Okay. Now that radical was only around this one term. So I don't need to give that exponent to multiple terms like we did on this problem. So it's not necessary here for me to simplify any further. I can go straight into my quotient rule, which means I have to take the numerator and then the denominator. So I'm going to say log of x to the fifth minus log of z and y to the two thirds. Now notice that I still have a product inside the log. 
So I am going to have to break that up. So I get log of x to the fifth minus, and your products you do need to put in parentheses or brackets. So log of z plus log of y to the two thirds. Now here, I cannot just erase my brackets because I have a negative that actually does have to get distributed. So this would become log x to the fifth, and then it would become minus log z, and then that would also become minus log y to the two thirds. And then finally, I can take this guy's exponent and bring it to the front, <coughs> excuse me, and then this guy's exponent and bring it to the front. So then I end up with five log of x minus log of z minus two thirds log of y. And this is the final expansion of that original logarithm. Now moving on to the next one. So be careful, make sure that you can see this correctly. The seven power is applied to y. It's not the index of the radical. There is no index of this radical shown. So that means that it's automatically a two. So I am gonna first write this as y to the seven and then x, z to the third to the one half. <coughs> I'm having to write the radical as an exponent, right? But I have that exponent or that radical that applies to two terms inside. So I am gonna have to simplify this one a little bit further. So then the x to the one half and then z cubed to the one half means I'm gonna multiply those exponents and I get three halves. Now that I'm finished with that, I can go on to step one for the quotient. There's no quotient here though. So I can go on to step two, which is the product. And notice that there's a product of three different things. So I am going to separate all of them. This plus this plus this. Okay. Um, the product rule is not like the quotient rule. With the quotient rule, you have to break it up with the top and the bottom first. The product rule, it doesn't matter how many factors you have, you can break them all. One factor plus the log of the other factor plus the log of the third factor plus the log of the fourth factor, so on and so forth. You could keep applying that one over and over and over. With the quotient, it only up gets applied once, okay? And then you break up anything that needs to be broken up using the product rule after that. Okay, now what we'll go ahead and do is take our exponents to the front. So we get seven log y plus one half log of x plus three halves log of z. And we are finished with one. Now for the last one, again, we have to change it to its radical form. So we're gonna have um, x, y to the fourth raised to the one third. That cube root is the same as a one third exponent. And then apply that one third to both terms inside the parentheses or both terms, both factors that were inside the radical. And you get x to the one third, y to the four thirds, and then the z squared is still at the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna break up the quotient. So I do have to do the numerator and then the denominator. So I get log of x to the one third, y to the four thirds, and then minus log of z squared. Then I'm gonna do the product rule, which says I have log of x to the one third plus log of y to the four thirds minus log z squared. I do not have anything to distribute. I do not have an x outside the bracket to apply. So I not need those um, brackets. So I am going to rewrite the whole thing because I do have room um, without the brackets. And then I'm going to bring my exponents down. So I get one third log of x plus four thirds log of y minus two log of z. And this is the final expansion of this original log.